What is going on everybody? Lamont at large here today. We're in Cedar Rapids, Iowa on this uh, lovely summer day. We're going to talk about the curious case of one Hazel McGrew. She was a woman that was not well known in Cedar Rapids. Had friends, not a whole lot of friends. Kept to herself. Loved a good book. So much, in fact, that she wouldn't even let her own debt stop her from checking out one of her favorite books at this library right here. Let's get right into this story. This is the Museum of Art, formerly the Cedar Rapids Public Library. Uh, this was a hub, a place where people would come to check out books, get out of the heat, get out of the cold, and for one 66-year-old Hazel McGrew, she would find solace in coming to this library. Back in those days, it used to be nice and quiet. Just come here, read for a while, get away from the nosy neighbors. And she was well known in this library. Uh, they actually knew her by name as she would come here so very often. So we're gonna go back to October 10th, 1962. Uh, the weather here is really, really nice at that time. And the employees at the library are putting books back that people didn't put where they go and telling kids to shh, this is a library. And upstairs, they're putting some books away. And as they're coming from a balcony, they see Hazel McGrew. And they say, hey, Hazel, how's it going? What, what are you doing? Other than you're at the library checking out more books. And she's like, oh, just, you know, smiles at them and waves. And that's it. And then they just see her waltz off down a hallway. And that's it. Now, back in those days, Oftentimes, newspapers, not every newspaper, but sometimes, they would have their morning edition, which was printed around maybe two or three o'clock in the morning and for the morning readers. And then sometimes they would have an afternoon newspaper. Gotta sell those newspapers for the you know, advertising revenue. So they wave goodbye to Hazel and the afternoon edition of the Cedar Rapids Gazette or whatever, newspaper it was called and on the front page is a story about a fire that happened not too far from this very location where I'm at and one woman died in the fire and her name was Hazel McGrew wait a minute they're shaking their heads and they're looking at the newspaper they can't believe their eyes what do you mean Hazel McGrew, we just seen her. Now that's when you start second guessing yourself and you, you start thinking, is this real or what have you? And right in front of their eyes was a picture of a fire and her name and her age was right there stating that she died of smoke inhalation in a fire. But you have two employees of this building that used to be a library that swear up and down that they seen her and some say till this day that hazel mcgrew is walking up and down these always maybe she's looking at these exhibits waiting to check out yet another book so here we are at the Exhibit for uh, Roman, Roman life, or what have you, I don't know. Not sure what these are, but um, looks like, oh, these are 19th century uh, reproductions of what, uh, I guess, ro what Roman uh, instruments or whatever. Uh, I got a special guest with me. He doesn't want to be on camera but he has a story about what happened here okay over a hundred years ago there was a uh, um, 
a police detective that was killed in this back stairwell um, by a assailant um, who was uh, on the lam. The police officer chased him and from the Newbo neighborhood, now Newbo neighborhood in Cedar Rapids. I think there was a streetcar involved. And the guy ended up, you know, fleeing into the public library. And they ended up actually uh, cornering the uh, police officer in the uh, stairwell here. And so they shot the police officer and he succumbed yeah. to his injuries. Yes, he did. And you told me that when you come here, it feels a little odd. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to fake anything. It feels a little, I, it's a little cold and it feels a little weird, but mm -hmm. I, I, I feel the same way feelings. So other than this, uh, this would be an area where you're like a little bit uneasy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just a little creepy, little, you know, little, like you said, cold. You know, it just, you know, there's just, just kind of, you know, a little, you know, presence or something in this stairway, so. Okay, thank you for your time. Appreciate no it. Thank you. This is the location where Hazel used to live. 511A Avenue Northeast no longer exists. But before this place right here was built and this parking lot was made, there was an apartment and she lived in the rear not sure what apartment number but it was in the rear upstairs and she didn't die from the flames but she died from smoke inhalation i believe she was the only one to die in the fire now to conclude the video per usual you guys know how i do we're gonna go visit her final resting place This is the final stop of our tour. This is the Linwood Cemetery. And I ain't gonna lie to you, this grave was not the easiest to find because Hazel has no marker and neither does her husband, Guy. So it took a couple trips going to the office and uh, their records are not the best of kept. But according to their book and the map, uh, this is where Guy and Hazel McGrew are buried. Again, I, I don't know why they don't have a marker, but in their book, which is pretty, pretty old, they're buried next to the nobles. And uh, there is a McGrew. It's definitely not this because that's a Brinkman. And there is a McGrew there over here Thomas McGrew so they would be in that uh, markerless grave over here Definitely an interesting story to say the least and uh, you know I enjoyed this quick little video not the part about looking for the final resting place It, it may not look like it, but <laughs> it is uh, very very humid right now, but um, yeah, just a, a very interesting story and Who knows who knows if it's uh a thing or not you know but uh, you know for these stories I'm not gonna be using any voice boxes or any spirit gadgets or nothing like that it's just a story of a uh, urban legend but of course I always want you guys to let me know in the comments if you believe what uh, took place who knows before I head out this was a pretty interesting grave I wanted to show you quickly uh, this is the grave of the Cherry Sisters, Addie and Epi Cherry. So these sisters, they were uh, vaudeville performers. And uh, after their parents passed, uh, they were broke. They didn't know what to do. And back in those days, it was almost looked down upon to be a performer. Uh, it was the equivalent of, I guess, if you performed in a circus, it's not a very glamorous life. And they just started performing and they couldn't sing worth a lick. And they would often be the opening act for other performers and people would boo them because they were terrible. But 
it became like a running joke for them to perform around the country and people would boo them and it became funny and they started becoming more popular because they were terrible singers and oftentimes they would perform in venues and sell out the whole place just for them to kind of be mocked and laughed at and have people throw tomatoes and banana peels at them and uh there was a critic from iowa that had uh wrote a criticism in the paper saying how terrible they are and they sued him for libel and uh, the Iowa Supreme Court they struck down their lawsuit saying that it was a uh, fair criticism to criticize somebody just for your own opinion and that's how the uh, criticism and fair use laws uh, and libel laws first started was because of their case fair use and critique so let that be a lesson any youtubers out there that i critique hey you can't sue me because it's uh, fair use and uh, under comments and criticisms see told you ha 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 catch me again all right guys i'm out of here let me know in the comments what you think about the story. Let me know what you think about the sisters, Jerry sisters. Man, I haven't been this tired since yesterday. I'm going to go get me a nice cool drink of water and a shower. Live, but not live, still alive. By the grace of God, I am Lamont at Large. Catch up with you on the next one. I hope to anyway see you there. Peace out.